Returning to Source, Class 8, Crisis of Leisure and Savoring Life. Hello, I'm Jim Morningstar, your guide through this nine-class journey of returning to Source. The eighth in our class series is entitled Crisis of Leisure and Savoring Life. We'll do our own exploratory breathwork to peek beyond the veils of our fear to the wonders that await us. Crisis of leisure. As we grow in consciousness, we de-identify from states of scarcity and open the doors to a greater sense of unity and support in the universe. Consequently, many of the activities with which we occupied our time in order to survive take on a different cast. We may still work, but it's done from a different motive, one of education and awakening versus competing and accumulating. Meditation and breathwork are less frills of existence and more of the direct pathway to living one's purpose. The quotes, crisis of leisure, refers to the reprogramming of survival habits, which in some cases means doing something different. For example, not working at a soul-deadening job to make money. And in other cases, engaging in our current activities with a whole different mindset and feeling. Let's do a personal inventory of how we imagine these changes in our life. As Einstein sagely observed, imagination is eminently more valuable for our future than knowledge, which is always being updated. And as Steve Behrman also pointed out, we live in a world of make-believe. That is, we make what we believe. So let's examine what would happen if we changed our beliefs about what we need to do to survive and imagine how we would live differently. A few warnings in the process. The classic American dream is to accumulate enough wealth to, quotes, not have to work and retire and do nothing. For most men who have identified with their job or work skills, to suddenly stop them has resulted in boredom, illness, depression, and hastened death. How many rounds of golf can you play in a week? Or lobster dinners can you consume? For many women who have all of a sudden found their husbands underfoot and aimless, their prospects for happiness have seemed equally dismal. <laughs> so take Class 8 Handout 1, Survival to Leisure Inventory, and complete Section 1A, three major activities in which I've invested that have some amount of survival fears behind them are, for example, work, schooling, family, and social relationships. Now, this does not mean that the activity was 100% motivated by survival fears, but did have some degree of your scarcity and well-being at stake in how you perform them. Then in 1B, the beliefs which have justified the ways I have engaged in these activities are, write whatever fear-based beliefs were behind how you engaged in each of these activities. For example, if I didn't get good grades, my status with my parents or future employers would be jeopardized. Section 2A, how I envision changing the above activities if survival fears were not in question. The beliefs I would need to support these changes are. Now write whatever you imagine you would need to believe in order to change your life activities without fear. Leave Section 3 blank for now. If you can, turn off the video and complete the three subheadings in Sections 1 and 2 of Handout 1, and then come back to the video. Each month, we do an experiential exercise that highlights the level of conscious evolution we're examining within us. This month, it's the experientialistic level of existence. The experientialistic ideal of this level is to live free of survival patterns such that one can feel in sync with the flow of life and supported in a friendly universe. The elements of 
released body and mind, experiencing the oneness and connection of all being, and safety in relationships are important to this level. Again, we use these exercises to bring to consciousness what may be impeding our full potential and empowerment. Exercise one. We'll now work with the example of the life experiences you described in handout one, sections one and two. We're going to take you through a guided breathwork visualization around the situations in which your survival feelings and attitudes were associated. However, be open to whatever surfaces as you breathe. It could be just sensations, emotions, thoughts, and or other attitudes than the ones you wrote down. Suggest that whatever comes up is there for the benefit of your intended release or reinforcement. Get yourself in a comfortable, relaxed, sitting or lying position in which you are warm and comfortably supported. Stop the video if you need to get situated and then come back. First, have the loving intention to go back to those experiences you wrote about on handout one, sections one and two, for the purpose of releasing whatever feelings and beliefs do not serve you and reinforcing those that do. Our purpose is restoring full aliveness and health to your body, mind, and spirit. We will again use a form of faster than normal breathing through the mouth and releasing on the exhale to initiate a somewhat heightened energy state. You may also use some active expression and movements if they help you to reprogram attitudes you choose to reprogram. You'll put your attention on your diaphragm and heart area. And breathing through your mouth, take an active inhale, bringing the energy from your diaphragm to your heart, then without pause, exhale from your heart to your diaphragm, not pushing or forcing it, and releasing on the exhale. Keep the inhale and exhale connected without pause, but adjust your pace and volume to what allows you to be energized without overwhelming your system. It'll look something like this. We will do a few minutes of this faster breathing and then do some visualization work. Let's begin. Now keep the pace going. Let yourself get adjusted to a faster than normal rhythm that you can easily sustain as I talk. If you need to switch to breathing through your nose, you can do that, that's okay. Now continue your rhythm of faster than normal breathing and bring your attention to the way you engaged in the activities you noted on handout one, section one, that had survival fears associated with them. Now, as you continue to breathe, visualize your higher self supporting you and giving you exactly what you need to release any and all survival fears attached to these activities one at a time and strengthening your safety, ease, and openness to flow in your life. You may also use some active expression and movements if they help you reprogram attitudes you choose to reprogram, like get away, yuck. Now continue your rhythm of faster than normal breathing and bring your attention to the ways you envision performing or changing these activities to be free of fear and reinforce the beliefs you want to sustain and grow in this way of doing life.
As you continue to breathe, visualize your higher self supporting you in this transition of releasing all fear and motivation and replacing your beliefs and outlook on life to one of savoring your experience of every day. Again, you may also use some active expression and movements if they help you to reprogram attitudes you choose to reprogram. Now return to normal breathing and imagine that you merge with your higher self so that you and your higher self are one and the same. Bring yourself back to the awareness of your surroundings with the suggestion that you dedicate your breath to the continual process of growing and savoring life more and more each day in oneness with Source. Now take handout one and complete section 3A, actions I'm willing to initiate in the next month towards changing my survival behaviors and beliefs are one, two, and three, and section 3B, the steps I'm willing to take toward these behaviors and the dates by which I'm willing to take them are one, two, and three. Turn off the video and come back after completing handout one, sections 3A and 3B. Holding you in my heart as fellow travelers on the road home, I send and receive blessings for our circle and all sentient beings. Till next class, blessings in light and love.